And so, okay, that, that was, that was interesting. And so when the opportunity came across my, my desk, okay, there's a big predictable gold system in Nevada that you can pick up for $250,000. Sign me up. Michael Allen, what's going on? How are you? Doing very well. Good to be uh, back in Vancouver. Been a, been a busy week. I was just done in, in Fort Lauderdale for a conference and good to be back home. Yeah, for all those listening and viewing, that's where I met you. I met you at this conference. Um, you mentioned to me there in offline that it, it's treating you well and you like the exposure. That's fantastic. Um, let's talk specifically about you. We met down there, had some good conversations, but let's talk about how did this start? Well, let's talk with you and your background. Where, how did you start this company? Where did that Genesis come from? And where did you start uh, dating, um, breaking in, in this business? Well, that's, uh, gosh, we only have 20 minutes. Um, I, I mean, I, in simplest terms, I came up the technical links. Uh, I've got a, got a geology degree at, and did all of the, the things that, uh, that a young geologist does. I've been all over the Arctic. Uh, back in the in the late '90s, early 2000s, I was part of the team that drove underground into some of the new diamond mines, and they were were going in. I worked for De Beers for for a little while. Pardon me. Um, but the focus was to go eventually go corporate. Um, you know, the exploration geology, being in those remote camps, it's a fantastic experience if you're young, uh, and so. But as you get older. It's tougher. You want to have a family, you want to have kids. It's, it's tough on a six and two rotation. So I had the, the, the goal of going corporate and that coincided with a, a job that I got that took me down to Nevada and, and I was hired as VPX and I, that was my first sort of corporate title. And I was thinking about the, you know, this transition now that you're starting to get into the more corporate roles. And I made a decision based, uh, based on uh, an article that I, I read an interview with Rick rule, um, summary of the article was management teams are jurisdiction specific, a, a team, a guy needs to specialize. And there was another article I read that, uh, was Sean Rosen and I made money driving back and forth between Timmins and Valdor. I know everything. I know everybody. And I just pick off projects and, and make money. And so as a, as a young man, I was driving between Vegas and Reno and trying to figure out where I wanted to spend the rest of my career. And I was like, you know what, this is not a bad place to be. Um, so that was the decision. So I, I ultimately wound up specializing in that part of the world. And it, it's been good to me. Um, if I'm in the Go ahead. I lived a year in Reno and I've made that drive many times. Yeah. It's, it's a lovely. It's, 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 I like Rio a lot more, but yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Generally, the, the, for whatever reason, the mining people, well, yeah, Reno's the closest city to the, to the big mining complexes in northern, northern Nevada. So that's where you find a lot of the consultants and, and those sorts of things are, um, so the people are based, based there. Vegas is, is, is interesting just as a, as a lark. Um, well, that's a whole other thing that we're not going to post on, on the internet, but, uh, of different adventures in, in Las Vegas. But the, what struck me about, about that part of the world, it's called the Walker Lane, is the opportunity for discoveries and the opportunity that juniors can, can make, um, you can actually get large pieces of ground, uh, around a, a project in, in the Walker Lane. Versus Carlin Trend, Gatchel Trend, Battle Mountain, the, the more established uh, camps, the majors have got it all penned up. So a junior can't really make a, a move in, in there. And so that was from a business an analysis point of view, looked at that and said, okay, that's, that's interesting. You can actually make a case. And, um, and then I've been lucky, uh, you know, or lucky or making the most of my opportunities. That sort of is the same thing, but slightly different. To, uh -huh. I've done about a quarter billion dollars worth of, of transactions in the Walker Lane, buying and selling various projects. Um, and so 
you know, I've gotten the, the reputation of being that a specialist. I know the regulators, I know the contractors. It sort of goes back to what Sean Rosen said, you know, everybody knows me. And then you can just sort of, you know, what's good immediately when you, when you see it, you say, okay, that, that's a good project. I'm willing to, to push in on it. Uh -huh. um, you know, most notably, uh, I did a deal a few years ago, it was called Northern Empire and we identified at Target, um, and we acquired a, an asset. It's called the Sterling property. And we bought it for 10 million bucks and 16 months later, we sold it for $120 million. The, the asset went straight up and gone. And we, it was a business decision. We could have held it longer, um, gotten more market cap, but the dollar per share number, which is the true, you know, the true measure probably wouldn't have been, been much better. Um, that project has subsequently been, been sold for a higher price than, than we got for it four years later that, uh, we sold to Coor Mining, Coor sold it to Anglo Gold and Anglo Gold is consolidating on a new discovery that they'd made in Nevada. There's a 13 million ounce discovery that's contiguous with my old property and looks like it bleeds onto it. They're consolidating the district. So, and that goes back to the hypothesis, new discoveries can be made in the walking land, big ones. Um, and it's, uh, and it's something that we're, that we're working towards. If you know what you're doing, if you have the right yeah. expertise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about this project here. Yeah. Work that out for me. Yeah. I'm, I mean, we'll, I'm a lot, I'm naive. So tell me about it. So on September 3rd, we announced uh, an acquisition of what's called the, the Hercules project in Nevada. It's about an hour from, from Reno. Um, if it's east of Carson city, if you've, if you've been to, to that part of the world, Dayton, that part. Yeah. What we, it's, it's kind of an interesting story because I owned the property, uh, in a past life. Um, I started the company and we took it from nothing to about a $40 million us market cap and transacted on it. And they, the, the acquirer was after us for our cash and they, they put it into a, one of their assets. Ultimately that didn't work out particularly well. And I was able to get this asset back. The valuation on the, when I sold it was $25 million American. Uh, I bought it back for $250,000 Canadian. So, you know, buy low, sell high, buy low. Again. Wow. And this was all, and you know what? Yes. And I want to make clear too. Well, this is all in strike point gold, correct? Correct. This Hercules asset is now in, in strike point gold. Okay. And just so our listeners and viewers know, that is the current company strike point gold. Yeah. Um, okay. Wow. That's impressive. Well done. Yeah. But you said you did a stock rollback. Why? And it's to just work that out a little bit about for me, because I typically get, I get concerned. Not that word. This for two. The reason, so if you look at the the history of Straight Point, Straight Point's been around for, I think it's it's twelve years, and I've been a, a CEO, the CEO of the company for for two years. So it, I inherited a share structure, and it was getting vaguely Aussie. William so shared this news. Yeah, there was a, a gazillion share, shares issued in a, a, an outstanding. And when we got Hercules, it was sort of, you know, it's one of these transformational moments for, for the company. It's like, okay, now we've got a real flagship asset in, in Nevada. We're pivoting away from our, our old identity of a Northern Explorer. We're going to be putting the you know, refund plant to the company going forward. And it was just the right time. So we did a, a 10 for one consolidation. Okay. That took place, um, it took, went into effect on October 18th. So, and what has been interesting is the stock has actually performed since then. So we, yeah, we've been hold, we, when we rolled it back, it should have traded at about 25 cents a, cents a share. Last time I looked at it, we were sitting at 35 cents a, cents a share. So the people are saying, okay, we're let, we cork this thing up. You know, that's yeah. what shareholders are, are seeing. There's a lot more leverage in here. And so, you know, going forward, 
the the value that's that's going to be created is, is going to be very impactful on that share price. And yeah, for all that that dilution. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the property again. I did what you bought and sold it for, but tell me about the assets in the ground there and what or potential assets in the ground and what are we looking at? So uh, Hercules is, again, forgive the, the, the geologist here, it's a low sulfidation epithermal system. It doesn't know you what you're about, but go ahead. It, it, it's exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's the that's the the type of of system that 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 it's in. And without getting too much into the, into the details of it, what I went back was when we did the transaction, we had assays outstanding, and that was that was fine. Everybody took the took the risk. We didn't know what we were going to get. We were testing a new geological model when we did it, and after we did the transaction, the assays came back. And lo and behold, the new geological model worked. We took a big, what I'll call a random number generator as, to, as far as a, as an exploration uh, play and made it predictable. And so the, the way that, that, you know, and that's the first step of creating ounces, resources. And so, okay, that, that was, that was interesting. And so when the opportunity came across my, my desk. Okay, there's a big predictable gold system in Nevada that you can pick up for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So yeah, right. The other things that that sort of came in after we did the the transaction were we started to look a bit at the at the chemistry and what we were seeing in, in the rocks, and, and you know had to you know, pause and reflect. One of the things that's interesting about Hercules versus a lot of the epithermal systems is it'll occasionally do visible gold. And okay, that's, that's a great, great thing, but that's an indication that you're heading towards the bigger end of the spectrum. I understand that. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, you start to think about it's a hundred square kilometer land package. It's in the number one jurisdiction in the, in the world, starting head to head towards big. And it's starting to add to a lot of property that to interrupt you. Yeah. And, and there's a, there's a couple of reasons why it's such a, a big property. Um, and one of them is, is geology. The alteration system that, that we could observe, uh, on the ground was big. And so it's just like, okay, get as much of this as you can. Yeah. There's opportunity. The other part of it was the property is big because you need, you know, mining is, is, is area intensive. And so you need places to put stuff, whether it's, you know, uh, heat weeds, pads, waste rock piles, those sorts of, of things. Yeah. And then the, you know, the more, the you know, business side of it is if you're going to get big sponsorship, you know, a senior player to, to come in and, and take you out, they want something that's big. Like, you know, Barrett talks about tier one deposits or what's a tier one deposit, 500,000 ounces a year. You need that scale. And so you look at, at, at a project and you say, okay, this thing is interesting. Can it start to satisfy the business aspects? And I'll take the geology and go, okay, the geology is cool, but can it make the business case? Yeah. No, I and get so, it. Yeah. Well, I, and so for, for Hercules, you know, we've now got the big project, which can attract big people. The other thing, and it sort of goes back to my experience in the that uh, there is uh, a, what I'll call the big plummet. And in drilling in, in the U.S., there's, there's two types of permits, plan of operations, which is the big one, and notices. The notices are small permits. They take about a month to get. They allow you to do five acres of disturbance. Okay, that's fine. You can go and get one. And, and you see a lot of juniors will do that. They'll get it, and then they'll drill some walls, and then they go quiet while they're getting their big plummet. Mm -hmm. Hercules has the big permit and that's a two year effort and it's generally costs about a million dollars. So as you, you have the big permit. Yeah. So as you think about. That's the, very impressive actually. Yeah. And, and well done. you go back to the, to the business case of where this is and, and the Lasan curve and most companies working in the U S they'll make that discovery, they'll burn up their, their small permit. Yeah. And then they go quiet and, and that's the death of a, of a junior. This for a shareholder coming into today, 
they're going to get the re-rate on discovery uh -huh. and can move quickly into delineation. That new slow and, and the growth up the Lausan curve is going to be relatively smooth. Got it. Okay. So let me, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I have a good idea now, a good enough idea for myself as an investor of what you got and wanting to do more due diligence. I get it. Yeah. Um, my next question is here. I want to know as an investor, how many, what share you just had a rollback, but what, how many shares you got outstanding right now? So 26.4 million is the, is the short answer there. 26.4 million. Yeah. Wow. Well, that. Yeah. So yeah. it was, there are, there are warrants. I think if we, the, we that's where we want to index, where the warrants at, uh, 2.7 million warrants. Uh, the, the strike price for them is, is 70 cents. So we've 70 cents. When is, when do they expire? Be March, 2016, 2026, pardon me. Sorry. So in two years. Well, 18 months, right? 18 months. Yeah. 18 months. They, they were two year, two year warrants and we issued them in March of this year. So 2020, 2026. Okay. So I'm thinking of the, the that of those are those are still quite a bit out of the money, and I'm just thinking of like you still got a ways to run before you hit there. So that doesn't really do it. The double before we we hit uh hit that wall. Yeah, and so for for somebody coming in, you know, there is there's quite a bit of our of runway as we as we unlock well, the value there. Exactly. So that's what I'm thinking. So sure. you got you got a good upside before you the warrants and they. For all the listeners, and if you're new at this, you haven't done this, I am very aware. And when I analyze a company for myself in my own book, um, I want to know share structure and where the warrants at. Because a lot of times, and this is me talking, Michael, this is me talking to the audience here. You'll get a hedge fund or somebody go in there and short the, the hell out of the stock uh, at, where, at where the warrants are written because they got a free position. Um, so if you got... Either warrants that are deep in the money, that's a very positive thing. If you don't have any warrants, that's amazing, but that's good luck. Or if they're out of the money, you got a good, a good runway, as you put it. So, yes. yes. Okay. So now here's my, I guess, my next question. How much money do you have in the bank? And, um, yeah, tell me about that and tell me about financing moving forward. Yeah, I mean, we are, um, so on June 30th, we had 1.4 million Canadian in the, in the bank. It's, it's less than that. We've had to play our, our, our claim fees. Um, but that's the last re reported number. And then in terms of, of, of financing, there is, you know, we've got, we're going to have to raise money to go out and drill Hercules. That's the simple, yeah. simple answer there. So let me. Put this in a way that, another way, and I'm saying this for the viewer's benefit. Um, yes, there's no problem raising money. You have to raise money. We are dealing with, we're literally dealing with startups in the natural resource space. So think of it as a tech. You're always constantly doing a money raise. What you want to see is that it's going towards something, something very productive. So going back to you, Michael, you are, you're in a money raise and I'll just, Tell them talking to you, we can cut this out if we have to, but you're in a money raise right now, correct? Correct. We are live on a, on a financing. Uh, it is a Canadian dollar, in Canadian dollar terms, it's a 20 cent unit with a full warrant at 30 cents and an accelerator at 40. I, that's because you were hiding at 30, 35 cents. Yeah. That's very attractive. It is very attractive. Yeah. Okay. Do I need to cut that out? Um, I don't think so. I mean, it's bad. So let's roll. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, the question. Oh, I'm Might not quite, but it might be changing some things. Um, okay. Um, I, I mean, in terms of the, of the financing, we structured it to be attractive. 
And so when we, when we did the, the, the financing, it was pre-consolidation. And so we did the, did a pretty steep discount. We were, we were treated at about uh, two and a half cents or 25 cents. And so we discounted it down to 20, put the full warrant on, uh, and then put an accelerator on. And so we, you know, it's that overhang that you, that we're, that we've created can be blown away. We have success. You push on it, you know, start to market the company 10 days, forced exercise of those warrants. And that brings in a, a bunch more dough into the, into the company. Okay. Got it. Lastly, and this is, you probably can't come on on this, but I will, if it's okay with you. Um, this is a high, it depends on what happens with Hercules, but this is a high probability takeover, something about if you hit, if you hit big. Uh, my question is, what's the ETA, assuming you don't get taken off from that out, yeah. what the ETA of uh, production going into production? Probably oh, five right. years at the most. I mean, at the least. Oh no, no, no. I, well, I would say five years at the at the minimum. Uh, so you're going to fast track this in production to, in five years? No, you know, at the minimum. At the so, minimum. If yes, you think yeah, that's what I mean. I'm sorry, my time. That's a word salad. Yes, yes, minimum five years. So what's what's a range? Five to what years going into production? Five. I would say a more realistic thing would be ten. Really. So, you know, here, here's a timeline. So we start drilling in 2025 and we have exploration success. We, we go raise some money and we start stepping into delineation. That process for the sake of the argument takes, takes two years. So we're into 2027 resource estimate, PEA, um, metallurgy, all those things. Then there'll, there'll be a, a time to go back for more drilling, another couple of years. At the end of that, everything comes together fine on the, on the study side. You go into big, well, big boy permitting. It's called a, a, an EIS. That's a three year process. Yes, sir. If we're, if we were, if we came out in 2027, everything goes exactly right. We've, we've got all of our ducks in a row. We've got a feasibility level study which is a, a big ask, um, then we go into three years worth of, of, of permitting. Knowing what I know about Nevada, the baseline studies get started. The plan of operations permit that we've got is the baseline, you know, that, that biological survey and archeological stuff baseline that we did for the plan of operation feeds into the EIS. So. You always, for, for me, I'm looking to, ahead to those, to those future problems and trying to stream it, it out as best I can. But the EIS process is a minimum of three years. So if we were extremely lucky at, and had everything ready to go in two, we'd hit that five-year window. But more realistically, you're looking at probably five to 10 where we would have our are permanent than going into, into production. The, you know, the interesting things, well, I mean, and that's, that's just the, the reality of that. That's yeah. that is how the mining works. Yeah. No, that I'm glad you laid that out. And, and again, I read, I worded that wrongly when I asked, um, but this is for the viewers you're looking at my experience and it depends on the jurisdiction in Nevada by just about everyone is rated. Number one jurisdiction in the oh, it's, it's in the world. There, well, it goes back to the business case of when I was you know, making a focus. It's like Sierra Leone, no Nevada. So we are, uh, well, <laughs> but that that also is not only with assets in the ground. It's also has to do with just friendly and getting things done. But my my experience, and by no means, there's a lot of people that have a lot more experience than me do, but my experience is you're, you're looking at their minimum five years. That's if everything goes right, which never happens. So I think you have to have a, a window really realistically of seven years, if not 10 years, seven to 10 years, a lot more realistic. Also, again, I'm talking to the viewers is you want to evaluate this or how I would evaluate strike point gold. 
is it really depends. The early investors are going to be greatly rewarded with the share structure, but it's really dependent on hitting. And hitting, you have the scale there. You have the scale there if you hit. And that's, I'll be candid with you. I don't know. If, I don't know, Hercules. I don't know, Barry. That's you. So, but, and I mean, you know, there is, you, know, you, you're not me. I mean, I, I'm a geologist and so I can evaluate properties and I think about of course. And these things. You're probably best to find, you know, to just look at it and forget the horse. Look at the, you know, the axe. Look at the jockey. Look at, yeah. look at the jockey. And you look at a guy like, like me and okay, I'm, you know, I'm relatively young, but I've done this before. Yeah. You know, I've taken, I've been able to say, that's a good asset. I'm going to grab yeah. that good thing and make a win for shareholders. Don't be greedy either. And just get out and get out the door. No, um, that goes back to, and I'm interrupting you. That goes back to, yes, you, you bet on the jockey. Absolutely. On this one. And somebody that's done this a lot. And also some, but in that area and then knows the area very well, but also for me talking to the listeners and viewers, I do not mind use. Um, I actually like the energy and usually what I've found, and I also like experience, don't get me wrong, but I've had more, I don't want to say trouble, but I get like usually guys that are in their, their later start stages of the career, this is becomes a lifestyle company. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, and you, you do, you do see that. And I mean, what the way that I've actually structured this is, is there's a, I mean, in the company and the sphere of people that, that, that we use you know, consultants and lawyers, CFOs, the team, the geologist, I'm about the, I'm about the middle ground. Mm -hmm. There's people that are, that are younger th than me, you know, so the kid, mm -hmm. Kid geologist isn't necessarily the, the, the right term, but younger geologists and they're, they're moving their way up the field. They're learning the things that I did when I, when I was younger. There's also more senior people. Um, you know, my attorney is a, is a, is a wonderful person, but he's 15 years older than yeah, one. Really good. And, and, uh, I do have a couple of uh, senior geologists that are actually very fun to, uh, to work with, uh, one of them, and I'll, I'll show to the name here is, 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 cause it's a fantastic name for a, a geologist. It's, it's Ron Kickbush. And, and Ron is in his mid sixties mm -hmm. and he's you know, very active, very fit, but he's seen a lot. And so, when, and oddly enough, Ron drilled on Hercules back in the, in the eighties, always liked him. So when I got, got involved with this, like. Yeah, this is a great thing. I was out here in, in the eighties and there's opportunity here, there's opportunity there, there's opportunity there. And it's like, okay, let's, let's do this. But it helps having that, that history when you're also, when you're evaluating the, the project, because if something comes across my desk and okay, it's a project that I haven't heard of, hey, Ron, what do you think? Oh God, that thing, you know, or no, that one's interesting. But yeah. you, you know, you make a, you make a team to make a business and go from there. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Michael strike point gold. Yeah. Can you give me your website and your ticker for those that are in the Obviously strike point, uh, www.strikepointgold.com is the, is the website, uh, on the Canadian side, the, uh, ticker is SKP. It's, we trade on the, on the venture on the OTC, our ticker is S. T X F. Excellent. Got it. All right, Michael. Um, Michael did not pay for this interview, just so everybody knows. Also, I am not as of unit as of this recording an investor, just so everybody knows. So Michael, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, I will say that looks very attractive from an asset point of view, as well as a a structure, a share structural point of view. That looks very attractive. Thank you very much. You bet.